We acknowledge this land that we made on today is the traditional lands for the Ghana people and that we respect their spiritual relationship with their country. We also acknowledge the Ghana people as the custodians of the Adelaide region and that their cultural heritage beliefs are still as important to the living Ghana people today. We also pay respect to the cultural authority of Aboriginal people visiting or attending from other areas of South Australia and Australia present here. And I know we've got a few people who are regional, so I'd like to acknowledge the people from the lands that you're joining us today as well. One tip that I like to go through before we dive into Sway is that if you are just working one, with one screen, today's session, once I go through a couple of examples, is quite a hands-on session. So I hope that you'll be able to follow along and create a Sway as we're going. Um, so if you're working with one screen and need to see what I'm doing and work on your bit at the same time, you can use the Windows key and either the right or left arrow to split your screen. So um, Sway is only an online application. There isn't a desktop app that goes with it. And Sway is basically a presentation tool. So it's similar to PowerPoint, um, but it has one really cool feature or a few cool features um, that make it a bit different. So the first one is um, that it's what we call responsive. So if I take this newsletter from Wakefield Primary down, you can see that it's got some dots and it's already resizing that. And if I make this one about the size of a mobile phone, for example, you can see it's reformatted the text so that it looks nice on this smaller screen as well. So that's one really nice thing about Sway is that it's called what we call responsive. So whatever device you're viewing the presentation on, it will look nice and you'll be able to read it. Um, so that's one example of how schools are using Sway, and that's for newsletters. So that one I was just messing around with was a primary school, and this one here is a um, high school example. You can see they both use the same colour scheme. Um, but you can see it's quite nice. It's got things that come in. You're able to play around with the layout, um, include things like this, which is a photo stack. So that instead of having pages and pages of photos, we've just got them all in one spot and then we can click through them. Or you can arrange them like this, for example. As well as newsletters, um, you can use them for things like um, professional development presentations. So this one is another example. Um, this is the back end because this is the sway that um, belongs to me. And if I press the play here, you can see this one's a bit of a different style. It's more of, of that slide type style. But you can see it looks quite nice and professional and you can embed things like videos in there as well. Got another example. So this one here is one that a corporate unit has put together um, that's on Eddy. Um, and again, they put together something that's quite nice. This particular one, you have to log into view, so it's only available for people from the department. But Sways can be accessed, or you can share a link to um, share Sways with people outside of the department, which means you can share them with family. And students, if they create Sways, can share them with their family members as well. Um, I've got one more that I haven't got open for us. So let's open that one up now. So the last example I'm going to go through is um, one that I've pinched from Seton High School. So they get their students to do a student portfolio using Sway because it can be shared. 
Um, and so they get their students to use kind of a structure and then go in and put examples of how they meet the different sections of of the of the um, template that the schools provided. So there are some examples of how sways can be used in a school setting. I've also got a, a few more that I'll share as we're going, but let's get our hands dirty and let's dive into Sway ourselves. So you can access Sway through Microsoft 365 and you can get to Microsoft 365 through www.microsoft 365.com. I'll put that link in there. Thanks, Donna. That's fine if you've got no camera or mic. Um, you can type your questions. Just apologies if it takes a while for me to see them. So if you all click on Microsoft365.com, you should see a page similar to this. So if you can use the reactions to just give me a thumbs up when you're on this page, that would be great. Perfect. OK, so we're in here. Now, sometimes you might see Sway down the edge, but if you don't, you can go to the apps button on the side there. And then you can go to all apps over on the right. And then Sway is this teal type one with an S. So if we click in there, that brings up Sway. Now, if yours looks slightly different to this, um, you might need to um, click on something down here that says all Sways and then you'll get to this home page. It's changed since the last time I went in. Um, that's the thing with Microsoft, they're always changing things. Um, do yours look like this or are they slightly different? OK, right. Yeah, it looks like Microsoft is in the process of updating that and some people's haven't updated yet. So if yours looks different, you might have some tiles up here that um, age sways that you've had and then you might have some Oh, you might have up the top. You see where mine's got create new start from a topic, start from a document. You might have some um, some tiles that are similar to that and then you'd have any ways you might have created and you'd have templates underneath but there might be a button over where mine says see more that says all sways and if you click on that hopefully you get to this page does anyone um donna are you able to see if that works for you Emma, is yours the same or is yours different? Um, mine's the same as yours, but okay. um, except at the top, mine um, where it says edited is a drop down screen. Because so I, I had a fiddle obviously back in August last year or January last year, and I've yeah. obviously tried to create one. So, yeah. Okay. Um, Hopefully we can persevere. Hopefully everyone sees a button that says create new, even if it looks different to what you're seeing on my screen. Um, so Donna, hopefully you can see something that says create new, because um, that's what we're going to go in. Perfect. That's what we're going to go in. Before we do, I'm just going to show you the start from a topic though, because I think this is a really cool feature that you could be using with students in the classroom if you're a teacher. And Donna, yours won't have start from a topic in there because that that particular starting isn't available in the screen that I think you're seeing. Oh, it does? Oh, perfect. OK, so start from a topic. So this one, what this does is it if you put in a topic, it goes to Wikipedia and it gets the information from Wikipedia. Um, so I will just put in dinosaur. Dinosaur. And create outline. And the reason I think this is quite nice if you're wanting your 
students to create information text is although it looks like it's just copy and pasted the text from Wikipedia. I can't highlight, oops, let's undo that. Oops. Sorry, back. Sorry. Okay, I know what my computer's decided to do. Let's give it away. Okay, so I can't highlight any of that text. So I can't just copy and paste the text. I have to do a bit of reading and then summarize it and type in my text up there. So although it's given me an outline, and some suggestions of what I could write, I actually have to go in and do the writing myself. And then if I do press the play, it's put in those images for me, and that's the text that I, I've written in. So it's a quite nice way to scaffold students if they're writing information text. Okay. So now I'm going to hop back into that home page and this is where hopefully we can work together and create a sway. So what I want you to do is click on the create new. And what that does is it brings up a blank sway. Now, the first card in your sway is always the title, and that's going to come in nice and big. Um, so I, for this example, we're just going to make one about ourselves because we know ourselves. So I'm just going to put in here all about me. If I click background, that's going to put a background behind my header. So I might do that. And then hopefully all of you can access the search um sometimes it's blocked at schools but hopefully it's accessible for you guys um and i might just put in something that i like so let's put in fish and then i'm just gonna click on that notice at the moment it's creative commons only so that's really good in terms of um students just using photos that are appropriate and I've got my first heading and my first card. So if I want to see what this looks like at the moment, I can go up and press the play button up the top. And then I can see it. it's got my heading that's come in and my picture behind it. So I'm going to press edit again to get back to those cards. Everyone managed to put in a um, a title and a background image, all right. Okay, good. So now we're going to add some content in our sway. So this plus button here allows us to add different types of content. So if I click on that, um, I get some suggested ones and I also get some groups that I can choose from. So if I click in the text, I've got a heading one that I can add or some text. So I'm going to add a heading to begin with. And this is going to come in at the moment as a, a banner that comes across. So this might be um, my favourite animals. Again, if I wanted to, I could add a background, but I'm not going to go uh, add a background in this case. I'm going to do a plus. And I'm going to add, again, from the text menu, um, a heading to. And then here I might add um, wild animals. That might be the wild animals that I like. And then I'm going to go back and add another bit of text, and this time text and put in some text. So my favourite 
animals to see at the zoo. Uh-oh. And then I'll pull in some bullets. Zephos. Penguins. Um, and kangaroos. Now, I put in something that I might have some images about, um, but there's three of these. So again, I don't want three big pictures. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a stack. So again, I'm going to click on the plus, And this time I'm going to, I could pick it from here, but if I go to group, I can pick the stack from here. And now I've got this stack here. I can see it's a grouped type. I can click on the add content and choose what I want to add. So I could upload an image if I wanted to. But again, I'm just going to use the browse and, and find some images. So let's put in a hippo. And another image. Let's put in a penguin. That's a nice one. And the plus again image. Let's put in kangaroo. That one's quite a nice one. OK, so I've got my heading. I've got a heading one. A heading two, some text, and now I've got a group that's got some images um, to do with the bit that was above that. So now if I press play, I've got my heading coming in. You can see wild animals is a bit bigger than the rest of the text, and then that's my stack there. Okay, hopefully silence is good. <laughs> Right, I'm going to click back on edit to get back in. And I'm going to add some more. So at the moment, can you see there's three different colours on the screen? So this dark colour is all those images that are part of that stack. So if I press the plus here, it's going to add something to that stack. This next one, just click off, is part of the bit that's coming under this wild animals. So if I wanted to add some more text in this section, I could add it by hovering and clicking on the plus here. This one here, the third one, is all coming under this heading here, heading one. So I'm going to add another heading in here. For, and this time I want it as a heading two again. And this time I'm going to put in my favourite domestic animals. Again, I'm going to press the plus. And this time, if I go to group, I'm going to choose a different one. So I might choose a slideshow. And this is going to be like a carousel of images. So again, I'll add an image. This time I'm going to put in chicken. Don't want the ones we eat. And I'm going to add in another image of a um, goldfish. Uh, that one's quite nice. And then I might add one of a cat. So now I've got three of these, and it's what we call a slideshow group. So if I press play now, I've got my title, my animals, and then this is my slideshow that's coming in. And I clicked on it, so it's gone bigger. 
that, otherwise it's this size. So that's two types of groups that you can put in. Let's go back to the edit though. Now, this one here, it looked a bit small for me. So I'm just gonna go and show you how you can change the size. So I've not clicked on the image, I've clicked on the group. And I've got these icons here, a small square, a medium square and a large square. So I'm going to change it from the small to the medium. And now when I press play, and I can jump down to my favourite animals here, you can see that that's a nicer size to view on the screen. Okay, everyone going okay at the moment? Perfect. Okay, let's go back to edit. And I've got all the stuff to do with animals, my favourite animals. So now I'm going to add another heading. So I'm going to go right down to the bottom. And instead of doing text or any of those images, I'm going to do a heading one, and that's going to start a new section for me automatically. So here I'm going to put in my family. And then um, I'm going to do another plus, and I'm going to add some text in again and put in another bit about my family. Okay, now, if I'm talking about my family and I wanna add some extra details, it might be something that I might want to add a table in. Sway isn't very nice at, well, you can't easily put tables in Sway. There's a bit of a trick behind it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up a Word document and I want to use Word on the desktop. So if you can all pick into Word, and I'm going to start from a blank document. We just need a blank Word document opened up so that we can put in a table so we can add this to our sway. OK, so hopefully everyone's got Word open. If you now click on Insert and you can go Table and I'm just going to put in a really simple table with the people in my family, their ages and their names. So, uh, person, name, and age. And now you'll see how old I am. So, person, um, dad, and, and I've forgotten how old my husband is, so let's just put in some fake data. <laughs> Um, now you might, if you're doing a newsletter for your school or a newsletter for your class, you might want to put in a table that is your term planner, for example, um, or you might want to put in some data for, for your around your class. Now, if I save that like it is now, it's not going to look very nice. So. Um, I might just go in, make sure I click in the table, and then I can go to the table design tab at the top, and I can pick something that looks a bit nicer. So um, let's go for that. Mm, not really what I want. Um, let's try that one. Again, I it's a bit oversized, so I'm just going to move that in now if you don't see that ruler at the top you should be able to if your mouse is behaving um move it like that i'm just going to use the ones up the top 
And that's all we want in this document. We just want the table. We don't want anything else. So if you could just give me a thumbs up if you've managed to put a table into a blank word document. Thanks, Emma. Thanks, Natalie, Rachel. Perfect, Donna. Yep, are you going okay? Yeah, but if you aren't, if you come off mute and just give me a shout out, um, uh, otherwise we move on. Okay, so we've done our table, it's in Word. We have to do one more thing. We need to save it so that we can then upload it. So I'm just going to go and save mine to my desktop. And desktop so that I can get it quickly and click on save. And then I can close that document down. Now I need to close it, otherwise we will not be able to open it and insert it. OK, so I've done that. I'm now back in Sway and I'm going to go into that card again. And this time I'm going to click on upload. Now, if it doesn't show in suggested, if I go to media, I'll find upload in the media. So I'm going to click on upload. And then I'm going to go to my desktop and find that file that I saved. Here we go, my family. And then I just have to wait for it to put that into this way. So you can upload any document and Sway will have a look at the document and try and change it into a format that fits this way. Sometimes it does a good job, sometimes it needs a lot of editing. Um, this one though, you can see it's got that table and it's changed it to an image. So I'm going to change it to the medium. Now at the moment, if I open it up and my screen's quite small, say I'm reading this way on a um, phone, it might not show me all that table. So if you've got images and you want to make sure that the whole image can be seen, like this table, you need to make sure you go into focus points. And then you need to make sure that this is ticked. So in this case, it was ticked. Um, but this makes sure that the whole image shows up. So you can see it's showing up there and it's showing up on the mobile version as well. So if it's a really important image, so like this table or like any of the pictures that you add, just go into the focus point and make sure that's set right. Um, let's press play and see what that looks like now. So all about me, my favourite animals, there's that stack. There's that slide. And oh, it's put in my family as well, so I can get rid of that one. Um, but that's me. Now that's too big. So I'm going to go back up the top to edit. Change it from medium to small. And then let's get rid of this card. So if yours didn't have an extra one, you don't have to get rid of it. But I'm going to get rid of that. And then this is coming in that section to about my family. And now if I press play again. That looks a lot better. It's a nicer size for me. Um, if you are putting in a term planner, though, you might want it big so that um, people can read it on their screen. OK, so we've got we put in a table. Let's have a look at what else we can add. So I'm going to do 
a new heading again because I want to start a new section. And in here, I might put in uh, things I like to do. And now I'm going to actually go to the media and I can put in a video or embed something. So if you've got a video that isn't stored anywhere, if you click video, you can upload that. And that means that you can share that video with the school community. But today I'm just going to click on that embed because I don't have a video that's ready to share. I'm going to share something that's been uploaded to YouTube. So I'm going to click on embed. And then it says paste your embed code here. Now, for this, I'm just going to go to YouTube and I'm just going to get um, a clip. This is our team's YouTube channel. So I'm just going to get a clip. Um, and I want to get the embed code. So if you want to just use this rather than searching for one yourself, I'll just put the URL to get to the video in the chat. But once you've opened up a YouTube, we want to get the embed code. So if you're not sure or you've never heard of that before, in YouTube, if you click on the share, you'll see those angle brackets appear and embed underneath. That's what you want to click on. And if I click on that, I've got this funny code in here. That's HTML, but that's my embed code. Um, so I can copy that. And then I'm going to go back to my sway. Here, here we are. And click in there and do control V to paste. And then if I click out, I can see my video show up there. So do you want me to show you another uh, one more time how to do that or are we OK? I'd like you to show me again, please. Yep, perfect. Oh, I got a little bit lost. Sorry, no, thank you. It, it's all good. So um, actually, let's start from the YouTube rather than Sway. So I'm in YouTube. It doesn't matter what video I've got. Um, it's one that I want to insert. So I go down to that share button down there. From there, I see that there's this embed icon here. And when I click on that, that gives me this special code, which is HTML. I'm going to click on copy, and that's going to copy that code to my clipboard. And then I can go back into my sway and if I click on the plus now and go to media you can see I've got that embed with those angle brackets again I can click on that and then put my cursor in where it says paste your embed code and then control v on my keyboard and click out and that video is now embedded. Uh, yes, you can if you want to do the paste with your mouse as well. Um, however you do paste, it is fine. As long as you've copied the code first, you can paste it in, Donna, that's fine. Again, I can choose what size this comes up. So I might want it to be medium. I tend to avoid using the large because large is large on a screen. Um, but let's press play now. And let's have a look. So that's the small size and that's the medium size that's coming. So probably for this one, I could get away with, with the small size. OK. So let's just go back in now. Hopefully, Emma, that's all right now. Hopefully. Maybe. Yep, perfect. Um, if I go back into media, um, 
so video as i said if you've got your own video that you've recorded so um, you've got your students permission and you've recorded something in your class and you want to upload it or, or your school um, that's where if you click there um, you can get suggested or if you go to onedrive or my device um, that allows you to then upload that I'll just cancel it does take a little bit of time to upload depending on the file uh, file size if I've accidentally clicked on uh, something that I don't want again I can click on that rubbish bin to get rid of it um, the so that's video images is just an image um, however that's if you wanted to add an image without it being in a group um, and audio is if you wanted to put in an audio file again you would have to pre-record this you can't do the recording in sway as well and then groups we've looked at the slideshow and the stack um, if you click automatic it will kind of arrange the pictures or, or the items how it thinks it, it looks good so that's another um, nice one to use when you're grouping things okay but now that we've got something in our sway let's have a look at the design section so so far we've been working in something called the storyline which is where we go in order to add our materials on these things which are cards now if i click into design it looks a bit like what it looked like in play but I've got this thing called styles. So if I click in styles, I've got some flexibility around changing how this way is going to look. So there's a really cool button called Remix. If I press that, it will just pick something out that it, it likes and I can just keep on pressing that until um, I find something that looks nice um, let's have a look yeah that looks all right um just note that the only way i could go back to that first design would be to do the back button so that isn't version history in sway um if i wanted to change that color i could go into customize and if I've got a hex code, so that's what the computer uses to um, name colors, um, I could add that in there. Or if I've uploaded pictures in there, I could choose a picture and then it's gonna give me some color palettes from that picture. So if you need to have your sway looking like it belongs to your school, for example, if you've uploaded your school emblem at the bottom of the sway for example um, then you could click on your school emblem and then it will give you some color palettes according to the colors in that image let's try that one instead yeah that's all right um, i can play around with the fonts a little bit there aren't that many fonts in there, but there are some that you can choose. So you can see my headings have now changed to that Cavoni Loni, and Arial is all my normal text. Um, and then the animation is these bits that come in from the side. So it could be just moderate where you don't really notice too intense and then I could change the font size as well. So again, I've got a little bit of flexibility, not much, but a little bit. If you're wanting to create a sway and you're wanting to have a similar look and feel each time you create a sway, I really suggest that you get you spend time perfecting one and then you save it as a template. So I will now move on to the sharing and the saving and exporting and that kind of thing. 
So, um, say I'm happy with this. I've got some options up here. So if I click on share, this is um, how I might share this for people to edit or view. So if I want anyone, so that might be community members to be able to view this, I do anyone with a link and then I click on that page icon um, to copy that link and that's what I could send. If I want to embed this, so say I want it on my school website or um, in my Facebook or Class Dojo or something like that, I can click on get embed code and copy that and then that will allow me to insert it um, as an embedded um, artifact. Um, I can also get a visual link um, which gives me like a an, um, a tile um, and if I copy that and paste that into an email for example I'll get a visual come up in there. So that's sharing. Now at the moment it's view. If I click on edit that means anyone that I've shared this link to will be able to go in and change it. Um, so if you're wanting it to be a newsletter, for example, um, make sure you've got view there rather than edit. However, if you're wanting, um, so I would do those in your organisation, if you're wanting to create a newsletter with a co-teacher or as a whole school staff, um, I would do those in your organisation, so that means it's limited to people with at school's email addresses, and I click on edit, and then people can go in and, and add their own bits to um, this way, um, which saves one person having to do all the work. Um, in uh, the more options, you can put a password in, so if you did want to limit who could edit it, um, you could add a password. Now, next to the share button, there's those three dots. If I click on there, I've got um, two options that I can use. So I've got duplicate this Sway and save as a template. Now, Sways only live in your personal account. I can't create a Sway and then send it to you, Emma and then it lives in yours. How we could share a Sway is if I um, create it and then send you the editing link. But the Sway still lives in my account. So if I wanted to, if I'd worked and got a Sway nice that I wanted to use as a newsletter, for example, I could do two things. I could save as a template. And if I click on there, so I'll give it a name and click save. This means that in my version of Sway, if I scroll down to start from a template now, I've got that all about me template. And when I click on that, um, it's got start editing this way. Just going to go back. I can't share the template. So if I do that and do start editing this way, it's going to create another one that looks like this. It's going to take this as its name. So I'm just going to call it um, version two so we can see. And now, when I go back to Sway by clicking in the top left, in my Sway, as you can see, that one that I originally worked on and that one that I got from this template that I saved. So if you are um, creating one for your school, I'd save it as a template. And then I would go ahead 
and create enough for your year, for example. And then I'd be going into these individual ones and doing that share and the edit link. So people can then have access to that to edit. The other one was duplicate. Now this one as well will create a copy. So if I click on that duplicate this way, I can rename it. And let's go to MySpace so we can see it. So now I've got three of the same. The difference with duplicate is I'd have to go into each one or go back into my Sway and duplicate. And if I've made any changes, it will copy those changes. Whereas my template is just a click and start from template. So that's the difference, if that makes sense. Okay, um, so I think we just about covered everything except the start from a document button, which is similar to what we did when we did a table. And if I click on that one, again, it opens up my computer. Now, I'm just gonna close down this one because this is what I want to put in. And you'll see it doesn't come in very nicely, but it does come in enough for you to then be able to edit. So let's close it and let's find it. And it will take a bit of time to create it. So if you've got a pre-existing um, documents on newsletters, you can do it, create a sway from uploading it and then go in and see what it looks like. So it's got my heading that's come in. It's got that image that's come in. It's um, taken my text, uh, included the hyperlink, another image. This image though has gone a bit funny because it wasn't grouped together. So let's press play and have a look. It looks all right. Um, that one I'd probably want to make it a bit bigger because you can't see it very well. And then this one's a complete disaster, so I'd need to work on that. Um, but hopefully you get the idea that if I go back to Sway, if I do start from a document, it does allow me to upload a document and, and see what Sway does with it. Any questions before I just move on to where you can get some more resources? Um, I, when I was doing one before, I made a little mistake and added an extra heading. Yep. Um, is there a way that you can go back and link it or do you just delete it and start again? Um, so if I go into my version three, <laughs> Um, say instead of a text box, um, or say, let's say I did a heading, um, uh, books I like. Yes, is there, any, is there any way you can put that section four back into section three now or not? Yeah, so you see I've got that cursor that's like the move symbol. If I move that mm -hmm. up and you see it's now got a line underneath, I can just, yes. oops should be able to, okay. but I might just hash to take it for the card, I might move it up. I think actually because this is a heading, it, it doesn't like it. So this particular one, I'd have to go a, a, across and do the control copy and then delete because it's okay. a heading. But if I did a heading and then did some text, and found that this text is in the wrong spot, I can move the text up. Same with if I put this video in the wrong spot, in the wrong section, I can move that into another heading. So my headings I can't move, but I can move everything that's under the heading 
if I need to. Does okay, that make thank sense? Thank you. Yes, and that's yep. very handy. Yep. It, it does take a bit of fiddling around at first to make it look exactly how you want it to look, um, especially playing around in the design section and playing around with the sizing. Um, can you change individual images into a stack? So, yes. So, um, let's just add some random images. Um, do wild animals again. So I've added five in. Oh dear, it's grouped it already. I'm going to ungroup. So they're in there. Um, and I've ungrouped it. Oh, it's grouped it already. But say, um, let's let's just create a stack underneath anyway. I can then drag this individual image down into this particular stack that I've got. So if I go into play. I can see these ones are the ones that I just put in and they were in a group. And they're the ones that I've managed to drag in to my stack. So I can, if I want, take things from a stack or a group and move them into a different section. Donna, hopefully that answers your question. Any other questions? Do, do people have to, when you share the link, yeah. um, do they have to have Microsoft to be able to view it or it will just come up as a web link? So if you click on anyone with a link, they'll be able to see it without having to log on or doing anything. So if you're sharing this with the wider community, your student parents, for example, you need to click anyone with a link and copy that link and then share that out how you normally communicate with families. And then they can click on that and it will open up without them needing to do anything. If you clicked on those in your organisation with the link, that does require them to log in. So that might be if you're doing a a sway for a PD session and you only want staff in your school to be able to access that, then that might be when I use um, those in your organisation with the link and I shared that. So if you find that community members aren't able to see it, it might be that you've got that one ticked instead of that one because the default is that second one down. Okay. Thank you. Hopefully Rachel and Natalie are okay. Are we all just in the small bit of time we've got left? Perfect. Um, just show you a couple of resources. Um, so we always like to show people about the Microsoft Learn website. This has a lot of resources that you can work through yourself. Um, we do suggest you create an account and log in. You can see I've I've logged in because I've got my profile photo. Um, but if you do that, then you'll keep a record of the courses that you've done and you can print that out for the teacher's registration if you need. Um, they've got a special educator centre. And if I go into professional development and browse all, if I put in Sway in the search, for example, Um, it comes up with a, a module around digital storytelling um, that is specific to the education um, context. Um, this, this website's great for any Microsoft apps. Um, and if you want things specific to education, just make sure you've got the K-12 educator ticked in the field of section. And then the last, um, resource that I like to share with you is our YouTube channel. So I'll put that in the chat as well. 
um, so our team has a YouTube channel and we create lots of short videos as well as our webinar recordings go on here as well. But we've got a playlist for Sway and there's lots of, there's a few longer ones that go through the whole process, but there's lots of short ones that show you the different aspects that we've covered, like how to change your colour scheme, how to share your newsletter example. So if you do get stuck on, on something, it's well worth having a look at our YouTube channel and I'll share the Sway playlist as well. Because um, hopefully you'll be able to help yourself. Um, the other place you can get help is the Microsoft 365 App Support and Collaboration team. So if you're not already a member of this team, it's well worth joining. I'll put the link in the chat as well. Uh, so this is a team that's open to anyone in the department who's a staff member. Um, and we've got channels down here, including one for Sway. And if you've got a question about something, um, you can pop your question in and even one, someone from our team or someone from another school somewhere will be able to answer your question or point you in the right direction. Um, so you're welcome to join that as well. So hopefully you got something out of today's session. I will send a link with the recording once I've cleaned it up. Um, and good luck this way.